Hi everybody, it's James from dreamweavertutorial.co.uk and today we're going to be creating a product rotator. Now this product rotator is a great way for you to showcase the products you have for sale on your website. So we'll create a small four images gallery and attach a script which will cycle through the images while simultaneously displaying a larger image in the main window. You can hover over the smaller images which will bring them into focus with a raised opacity. And as an extra bonus, we're going to attach an image tooltip script so that when we hover over the product in the main window, an enlarged product image appears, so your potential buyers will be able to inspect the product more closely. Now, this product rotator looks quite complex, but it really isn't. We only need four images and two scripts to achieve this design, which makes it lightweight and fast loading. The images used in this tutorial and the scripts are available for a free download from my website, so if you're watching from YouTube, just click on the link in the description box. So I've managed to combine my product rotator within this sales page to give you an idea of how to incorporate it into your Dreamweaver website. If I get enough requests in the comment section, I'll also make a tutorial showing you how to make this sales page too, which includes creating a table, a small description and a nice product title. For now though, we're just going to concentrate on creating the element as the product rotator. Now I recommend you download the file and create a new site, define a new site. I've called mine Protator and uh, I've got four images and I've got two scripts files there. So I'm going to create a new HTML document, a blank HTML 1.0 transitional and press create. Now I'm going to go and split the screen, I'm going to go straight into the body tags and start coding. Now when you define this site in Dreamweaver you'll also notice that there's a couple of notepad files and those files are for script hooks. Now I'm going to create a div and it's going to be an ID of wrapper. So if you defined a new site and you're creating this for the first time as a test before you put it into your website, you're going to want to create the wrapper. Otherwise you're going to want to put this in whatever element you have selected within your website. Okay, so I'm also going to create a div with a class and it's going to be called class images and um, every time we create a div we're going to end it with a comment to say that it's the end, it makes it nice and neat and you'll be easier to navigate through uh, when you're looking for certain parts of the code. Okay so I'm also going to create a div with an ID I'm going to call that product images now it will be product with a capital I for the images so make sure you've got that correct and also going to leave a comment at the end of this one so it's the end of the product images. Now we're going to place um, our images inside of this div and we're going to create a placeholder so, and we're going to copy and paste it a few times to save us a little bit of time there. Okay so we've got the basic structure ready before we start putting in our images. I'm going to create my first image placeholder now. Okay, now the first div I'm going to create for the first image is going to be div ID equals image one. And uh, we've got three more images after this, and I'm going to create three more divs, and that'll be div ID image two, image three, and image four. Now each image is going to have a class, and that's going to be equal to tab, T A B. Now it's very important that you name it with a class of tab because that's what the script is going to look for when it rotates the images. Now I'm going to set an, an inline display uh, of block for the CSS style, so I'm going to type style equals, open quotations, display colon block, and uh, that's important because it's going to display our main image. Now I'm going to put in a IMG tag and uh, I'm going to open up my properties panel and I'm going to connect that first image and it's going to add the dimensions uh, for the image into the IMG tag. So I've clicked on the points file icon, I've pointed over to the image one and uh, we can see that that's now been input into our display. Now it's a very large image, it's 1500 by 1000 pixels. It doesn't have to be that large but for the purposes of this tutorial that's what I'm using. Now the image uh, file name is showing up quite strangely because I haven't saved the file. So I'm going to save that file now. I'm going to save that as protator.html and I should get my nice short um, file path to my images. So there we go, images slash image1.jpg, fantastic. 
Now it's best to use large images for your products so that when you reduce them in size it will retain some of that higher resolution. Now I'm going to change the width and height manually and I'm going to set it to a width of 355 and a height of 288 and that will reduce that extra large image down to a nice in product rotator size that we can use for our tutorial. Now uh, we're going to create four smaller images and they're going to be based off of these larger images also and we're going to reduce the size uh, inside of our code, our HTML code there. Okay, so now I've got the basic image structure. I'm going to copy and paste that structure another three times and then I'm going to change out the names of the div. So it'll be div ID image 2, image 3 and image 4. And uh, if we just press refresh now and look inside the design view, now that I've copied and pasted that three more times, we'll see there's four images inside of design view. So all I'm going to do now is change the div ID. So the first one's going to be image2.jpg and I'm also going to change the ID of the div to image2, div ID image2. And I'm going to do that with the third image and that'll be div ID image3 and image3.jpg and div ID image4 and image4.jpg okay so that's great if I press refresh now we'll see that the images have been changed over and we've got our four separate instances there but we only want one of those images to show at any one time now that first image the div ID image one is set to display block we're going to set the rest to display none and the scripts that we attach will cycle through all of these divs and change each one from none to block on rotation and that's how we'll get our image tabs rotating around our product rotator there. So you'll see inside the design view there's only one image showing now. Okay so the next thing I'd like to do is create a couple of CSS rules now and um, I'm going to click inside of the div ID of wrapper and I'm going to go over to the CSS panel I'm going to click on a new CSS rule button and I'm going to define that as wrapper. I'm going to define a new style sheet and click OK and I'm going to call this CSS and then I'll click Save. Now I want to click and create one more rule after this so I'm going to go back into my code I'm going to click on the div class image and click on the new CSS rule button and define that also and click OK and OK again and then we'll click and go inside of the CSS and we'll start styling our product rotator or at least the opening wrapper okay so I'm going to go inside of the wrapper div now and I'm going to define a width of that wrapper and I'm going to set it to 740 pixels so I want uh, the whole uh, element, the whole product rotator to fit inside of 740 pixels there okay so now I'd like to set some padding on uh, the images div class so I'm going to set padding attribute I'm going to set 20 pixels of padding on the top and bottom and 0 pixels of padding on the left and the right I'm going to click refresh and if you look inside design view you see it's nice and snug there 20 pixels of padding on the top and 20 pixels of padding on the bottom there now I'm going to go back into the source code and I want to start creating the elements or the code necessary to create the smaller images that are going to appear inside of our product rotator. So I'm going to make a small comment and I'm going to put smaller images and that's so you know that the smaller images are going to go just underneath that comment there. And uh, we're going to create an unordered list. So I'm going to create an unordered list with an ID and I'm going to call that product images dash nav dash nav. It's very important that you name uh, the unordered list, no matter what you do, that you end it with dash nav because the script we're going to use to attach is going to look so it can synchronize that main image with the smaller images. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, then just carry on, just copy what I'm doing, and you will end up with a great product rotator at the end of it and then you can analyze it afterwards. Now I'm going to create a list item inside of the unordered list and we're going to have to duplicate this another four times. Okay so I'm going to create a link now and this link is going to be a reference to the div tag above which is going to be the first div tag image one. So it's going to be pound image one 
and that's a reference to the main image so when the smaller image and the larger image synchronize on that rotation they're going to look for each other okay so I'm going to place an IMG tag now so IMG and I'm going to close that tag off and I'm going to go down to my properties panel and I'm going to use the points file icon and I'm going to link up the image one dot JPEG to this image placeholder so I'm going to click inside the points file drag it over to image one and if we go into the design view we can see a massive image has just appeared just like the first one that we inserted so we'll change the dimensions on that image and make it a lot lot smaller so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a width and the width is going to be 175 pixels and I'm going to set a height and the height is going to be 137 pixels okay so if I press refresh now we'll see that the image shrinks down to 175 pixels in width and 137 in height and it's going there nicely with our larger image now we're going to put in the other three images that we need to go with this product rotator uh, for now I'm going to set an alt tag and uh, that's so that you can pass your validation so I'm going to put an alternative text for the image of, as just jacket and uh, you can change it as to what you want it to be for whatever products you're using so I've copied that whole list item tag and I'm pasting it three more times and again I'm going to change out the names of the images so it will be a reference to the div ID image 2 and the image 2.jpg nice and simple this will be a reference to div ID image 3 and the image 3.jpg and once again image 4 and image 4.jpg and uh, that will add the rest of our images and they'll be one on top of each other I've just press refresh let's have a look at that in design view properly and there we go so they're stacked on top of each other now what we need to do is try and get them to fit inside of that small space uh, beside the larger image there and uh, to do that we're going to need to float them up uh, so they stack in a nice orderly square fashion there so I'm going to go back into my CSS and we're going to set a CSS rule so I'm going to type in pound product images make sure you use the capital I and dot tab and uh, this is a reference to the larger image so if we set that larger image to float left the containing elements will collapse and you'll see that two of them have now gone and uh, floated up beside that image but there's not enough room at the moment so we're going to create that little bit of extra space we need to get the others to float up now I'm going to set a width on the main image container to 355 pixels and we see that the smaller images have slightly moved in there okay so I'm now going to set a CSS rule for the unordered list so we can get those images into a better location so it'll be pound product images dash nav and that's the unordered list ID okay I'm going to set a margin now I'm going to set that to zero pixels on the top zero pixels on the right and zero pixels on the bottom but I'm going to set it to 360 pixels and it's going to push those images from the left 360 pixels over so if I press refresh now we'll see that they stack on top of each other 360 pixels to uh, the right position but we still need to move those two bottom images up into the top right hand corner now I'm going to just change that to 363 pixels there but I'm going to take the padding out of the images because with the unordered list it comes with a standard default padding so I'm going to take the padding out to zero pixels press refresh and there we go you can see it's moved in slightly okay so I'm going to set a CSS rule for the list items now so I'm going to go down just below the unordered list and I'm going to type in pound product images dash nav L I okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a float and I'm set it to float to the left and press refresh okay so we've got our basic structure now you can see that they've all floated up and we've got a nice square area now I need to set a little bit of 
padding between all of the images just to get them into a nicer position so they're all separate. 